Casting Call is brought to you by Guam Windward Memorial, because in the real world, you don't always get an extra life. Welcome back, everybody, to the second episode of the Laddie Esports Podcast, um, brought to you by Guam Windward Memorial. My name is Ark Pulse, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, Join also my guest co-host, Most Definite. Most, please uh, say some words. Hey, hey, thanks for having me on as a guest host. Uh, I love to be here because we have a special, special uh, person we're going to feature today. And you're absolutely right, Most. We are going to have a special person be uh, in, with us today. So um, let's just get this started. And uh, please introduce yourself, your full name, and also your handle. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, name is Aldwin Blanco. Call me AB in my handle. as uh, AB Jits. So... Yeah. <laughs> and we're really mm-hmm. glad to have you over here, AB. Uh, just right before we get started, though, I want to just uh, reiterate for the audience out there that this podcast is designed to just uh, interview uh, all of our local streamers, or we're going to attempt to interview our, our local streamers here on Island and just get their inside look on, you know, how are they able to, um, how they got into streaming, and also, how are they able to handle it on a personal level? How do they deal with it mental, uh, with their mental health? Like, how do they take care of themselves? Um, so now we're going to go move on into the questions itself. Um, AB, can you just explain to us, you know, what are your personal gaming background experiences? You know, what, what got it all started for you? And, uh, you know, we'd love to hear about that. Um, I guess going back into how long I've been playing games is ever since I was a toddler. Um, uh, Video games has been a big majority part of my life in terms of just playing for myself and also having my parents just keep me home and just to myself and not being naughty and all that stuff. So a really good, another role model or another person who inspired me to play video games was my older brother, uh, who back then had a Super Nintendo and who also started off with Street Fighter. So. we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to do the motions for any of the special moves. But hey, if you can jump in with a hard kick and go with the sweep, man, you legit, you legit in the uh, with our group of the family of playing that. So he wasn't a big gamer, but for some reason with Street Fighter and video games and growing up with my father buying me a Super Nintendo, my first PlayStation, and just going through with all the past video games that I played in my whole life that I know for sure that gaming was definitely something that was very important to me and had to be a part of my life. Definitely an interesting start. Wow. Um, Most, do you have any uh, questions for AB? Um, Oh, yeah. Well, right off the bat, um, I think you're already established as far as people who know you in the Guam community. The FGC, the fighting game community, is very well aware of who you are because of your Street Fighter antics. You've won numerous tournaments here on Guam. Um, You've represented well off Island 2 when you went to Japan Evil. You placed really well there. the, the fighting game aspect, uh, like you said, you were talking about Street Fighter and how it plays a big importance in your life. When did you start to feel like, hey, um, I'm, I'm actually okay at this game? When did it start to click? And when did you start to really, uh, I guess, commit a lot more time into putting into Street Fighter um, as a part of your daily gaming routine? Um, Man, so before I start off, I just want to say Art Pulse. Most definitely, thank you guys for having me. But I guess to go as far as I can with Street Fighter, I've always... You know, it's been a big part of my childhood because my brother introduced it to me. I mean, he's not really a gamer himself. He just liked to have it. We play with our cousin, uh, with, yeah, with our cousins. And, of course, we couldn't ever play because if my brother wasn't home, we can't play. So he was more of our disciplinary and our, our just the guy we looked up to. So uh, as if we were on good behavior, we could play. And then ever since then, I got my own console for myself. I've always just wanted to learn. I just wanted to play. And back then, too, when PlayStation came out, I had a majority of all the Street Fighter games, the collections, the other crossovers, and um, kind of collabs with other game companies like Street Fighter EX Alpha, uh, Plus Alpha, uh, Street Fighter Alpha series, and all these other collections that I've just basically worked hard just to learn the movements. So back then, too, within the game cases, you would have the manuals, and the manuals legit have all the moves. And I would just have to, like, okay, I would literally for motion characters was a little bit more easier for me, a little bit more easy for me. And then going back to charge characters, that's what I really struggled. So because I would have to put in a lot of work, like I would, the the, the, the manual would say charge for two seconds and then press forward. I'm like, okay, I'm literally counting to myself one, 
too, and then having to do these motions. So I would practice hours and hours just for that. And when it finally clicked, and even though I would play Street Fighter for myself, it finally clicked when Street Fighter 4 came out, which was around 2008 or 2009. Um, I, I, I was able to get the game for myself and one of our other homies who got the game. Uh, we will play with our group of friends, but of, of course, I was a little bit more familiar with everything, mechanics, uh, how Street Fighter works, and how you're supposed to win and what to be looking out for. And not going to lie, I was a little bit more experienced and can kind of beat my friends a little bit more often to the point where they're just like, ah, we're not going to play this game. Just AB, no, we're done. Just just take it. We're done. We're not playing this game. Like, all right, I'm sorry. Um, until... I found out that Guam actually had a fighting game community in FGC. And for me, I thought I was hot tamales, you know? I thought I was, bro, I'm, I beat my friends. I'm pretty good. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. That's how it so always starts, So I do want to give this my... It, that's how it always starts. So the first time I go into a tournament, my first opponent, shout out to the homie Ian, David, Ian Fergiger. Here I am coming up, playing with my real, like, yo, what's up, homie? Let's do it. He picks Abel, and Abel is a grappler, sambo slash judo. And here I am thinking, like, I know what he can do. Sure, whatever, right? But it's a different aspect when you're in training where the dummy doesn't hit you. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit easy. But when you're playing with someone who knows what they need to do to come and, like, whoop your butt, that's hard, you know? So he would come in. I would throw a Hadouken with uh, Ryu. who rolls right under it, grabs me, and just judo throws me. I'm like, what the? Uh, is, that, is that really what just happened? Sooner or later, I was 0-2. Uh, so I lost my first match in my first tournament, thinking and just thinking, pondering about my life. Like, is Street Fighter a waste of time? Because <laughs> I, wow, I got wrecked. And that yeah. tournament, I was able to finish off 1-2. Uh, so I did win one match. I lost to someone else. And I think my second match, if I'm not mistaken, I lost to GGPQ, which, mm, oh. nope, nope, nope. Check me now, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so now it's just, ever since then... I, I took that to heart. I took that effect. Like I found a I found a game that I really want to put all my like attention, my hard work, and show that I I want to be good at this game. I want to whoop people's butt and be like, hey man, you got outplayed. You you thought you could do that? No, not in my watch, man. I knew what I can do in terms of playing a game where I think I was pretty successful at, and uh, you know, hard work pays off. I was able to win couple of tournaments i still have you know some a specific person who's my demon who i've yet to um <laughs> kind of beat him but i don't think we'll ever do that because that's street fighter 4 but other than that man street fighter 4 was what started off what is what became and what pushed me to become the player i am and how it's continued for me to be a better uh, better player than i was before I think that's a perfect segue because we wanted to set up the Street Fighter, your background, because oddly enough, as your close friends know and your people who've been around your community the longest, um, Street Fighter is what got you into streaming, right? Yes. Isn't that what, what fueled the passion to stream? And because before there was AB Jits, you were AB Jitsu on, on the Xbox tags, right? So that was your previous tag. Um, talk about the transition from AB Jits the uh, casual, semi-competitive Street Fighter player to AB Jits, the streamer, and this is what I want to uh, build a platform around. Uh, okay, sure. So, um, going into, I guess, the AB Jitsu um, kind of tag. I had a few tags, but I wanted to do something that I just represented me the most. So, at that time, Street Fighter was a, a, my favorite game. It was a passion. It was an obsession. I was l literally obsessed with Street Fighter to the point where I can play it at a competitive level and show that I'm a, I, 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 I aspire to be a really great player, especially in the island of Guam. So at that time, I had another passion, which, uh, you know, big role model in my life, my older brother, who is actually a black belt in jiu-jitsu and has his own gym, has his own dojo, which, you know, told me, hey, uh, get off your butt. Let's go train. I'm like, okay, whatever, right? Sooner or later, did it a few times, and jiu-jitsu became kind of like a thing for me. So my brother's passion and what he loved kind of transpired to me, where I was like, man, I, I love jujitsu. I love jujitsu. So that's how the name came to be. In other words, my first name, my last name, the first two letters for my initials, AB. And of course, Brazilian jujitsu, jujitsu, last one, so AB jitsu. And how it kind of, you know, transferred to streaming, 
Um, I just got to give big shout outs to the homeboy Art Pulse because, man, I streaming was the first. I okay, let's kind of like rewind a little bit back. I have been friends and I have been classmates with Art Pulse for at least maybe a good year and a half in you know going to college, and I had never, I never knew that this man was streamer. He was a streamer. I did not know we were just classmates. Hey, can I copy your homework? Sure, you can. Get in trouble. Sorry, bro. It's just whatever. And it's just good friends, good classmates, and everything. But I never knew that that he had that double life of being a streamer. And then sooner or later, we reconnect back in Guam. We catch up. And little did I know, I, found, I find him on Twitch. And I'm like, oh, OK. And it's great because art can be this person how he is in real life and just also use that on Twitch. And it, it's just, you know, it attracts people. So you just see people coming through. And here I am just watching, like, wow, this is, damn, Ark. Like, okay, yeah, like, I see I see you. I, mean, I like you for the way, you know, the I person like you, you are. And I can see why other people like you too, right? So people coming through, and I see Ark just looking at these tags. You know, it's like MSN chat, right? You, it's just some random tag where you're like, hey, yo, that's, 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 uh, that's James. Like, oh, shit, like, how do, you, how, do you, how do you know that? That's cool. So Ark was doing his thing, having this really fun, silly, you know, um, uh, I guess bright personality that attracted people to come through for, at that time, he was streaming Pokemon. But I just love the aspect of the point that when Ark was streaming, people just came through. People just came through like, yo, what up, Ark? Yo, I was like, damn. And as soon as I realized that, I wanted that. Like, I, I, I really wanted that. I wanted to show that, man, I... I, I love that aspect of the fact that it's it brings it shows Guam values it show it shows Guam vibes to the point where you can legit be barbecuing at the beach doesn't even matter you see someone you know you see a cool person whatever hey bro come on come and eat man come chill and that's what it that's what it kind of showed me what Ark was doing so um, you know big shout outs to my 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 squad my stream dream team and my main squeezes for coming through and supporting me from the day one because you know shout outs to arc fam clc hamster and shout outs to most definite for just being there since day one because i was you know doing what i can in terms of what i wanted from a street for, from streaming and but i also wanted to progress my street level like my street fighter 5 my street fighter 5 journey on becoming like a better player and i told myself I'm going to become this rank sooner or later. And I know I can. I know I can. So along the way, um, at that time, I went with AB Jits because kind of people saying AB, which I, I loved, I, I nicknamed me, but people saying Jitsu, hey, Jitsu, it's just, it, it doesn't sound right. So I kind of had to shorten it and be like, AB Jits, yo, what up, Jits? I'm like, yo, I, I, I can, I, yo, I like that. I like that a lot. So, yeah. So going into the whole streaming and, you know, big motivation, big inspiration of having Ark as be one of them and then having the same person who inspired me and having my support squad with me along this journey and getting being where I am now has, I guess, evolved me. It has evolved my channel, has involved my streaming experience, has involved like evolved my community. And to be honest, I'd be nothing without my the love and support from any one of you guys. So, you know, I appreciate I appreciate everything that I've gone so far. I appreciate every little thing. Hey man, and we really appreciate you too. I appreciate you, my dude. Uh, big shout outs to you as well. Um, and it it does sound like a lot of humble beginnings, right? Um, you know, getting in your ass beat in tournament, and then just eventually growing up. Um, you know, getting better at the game. But uh, one thing I really just wanna bring to our attention is just the fact that it's it's about that uh the island vibes like what you mentioned like we just invite people to come over and just come come and chill with us pretty much we're open to that right it's something about being welcoming being hospitable and i think that is something that we all as a uh, guam local streamers uh, from what i see is what i um is something similar that we all share a value we all share so um, I'm going to be transitioning to or over to the next question is, you know, uh, streamers get very busy. So how, how are you able to balance out, you know, your personal life and your streaming life? You know, what have you done to relax? Um, yeah, so I guess if maybe for some of those who don't know, I'm, I, you know, born and raised from the beautiful island of Guam, but I'm currently been in Japan for the past four years for my job, for, for what I do. So... 
I it took a while. Not gonna lie, it took a while. It took me like a little bit, some time to adjust my work life, my extracurricular activities for myself, for anything outside work related, and at least giving a really consistent and um, you know a permanent schedule for my streams, right? Because like it would it would really suck to find a streamer that you really like and you really enjoy, and then he he or she has a schedule and they don't keep it, because 100% I'm guilty of that. For like my first maybe year, I was never consistent. And people are like, "Hey, you streaming today?" I'm like, "No." Nah. <laughs> like your your schedule though, you you gonna come through? No. Nah. Why? I'm tired. I'm tired. You know. And that's really unfair because like it 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 just shows it just comes to show that you know I start streaming and it, it can't it can't be like a take take kind of thing and only whatever whatever works for me. So if I have people coming around their uh, you know around the world who if their schedule works with mine, then they can watch me and they want to watch me and support me. I, I love it. But the one of the biggest things, too, is like I have some people who are staying up three or four o'clock in the morning. be like, oh, man, maybe I want to I catch a stream. I'm like, man, it just kind of gives you a whole new perspective of like get someone giving you their time. And so that's why I try to adjust. I try to whatever I can adjust maybe with work. Uh, I work morning to afternoon, late afternoon. And then whatever I can do for myself in terms of maybe gym or extracurricular activities, such as I, at that time studying Japanese and at that time judo, I was taking judo here and then also kind of breaking it down for stream. Um, so the one thing I had, I, I, I wanted, I was so gung ho about streaming. I was like, yo, five days a week, let's get it. Let's, yo, let's do it. And then after that, after two weeks of that, yo, I'm tired. Uh, look at four days a week. Yeah. I'm still tired. <laughs> Everything to be announced, you know. So I I finally found a work schedule or a stream schedule that works with everyone and everyone's at least a little bit understanding for me. And that's what I, I can really appreciate about my community is like they're just understanding. There's like, hey man, I had a long day at work. I had kids who were just ugh, and I'm just gonna take a rest today, you know what I mean? And they're like, Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I stream three days out of the week. And if I feel like streaming on the weekends, uh, that's it. That's what that's what I put it as. If I want to feel, if I want to stream, hope to see you there. If you got the time, come through. But I, it took me a time. It took me some time to get a little bit adjusted, to get a little bit more uh, what my body can handle too, because I don't want to overwork myself. Where I go to work, do what I need to do, eat, shower, and all that stuff, stream, and then it's like 11, and I can barely even get some time to myself to. Uh, uh, like relax and then I just got to go straight to sleep and then repeat the whole like cycle again so that's why it gets a little bit tiring so that's something I would I guess recommend that you as much as you want to um, please your community as much as you want to make sure you give everything back to your supporters you also have to think about yourself and that's one thing I just want to uh, I just want to say is like take some time for yourself if you have to if you're stressed out if you're not in the mood to stream don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't, don't do it. Don't do it. That's that's all I can say. If you're not in the mood or if you if you have the skill to separate whatever is kind of ticking you off and you think streaming can actually hang out with your friends and hang out with your supporters is going to help you, by all means, do what you got to do. But if you don't really know how to take away what's pissing you off at work or personal and you bring it to stream and you're quiet and you're not entertaining and you're not being your usual self, yeah, it's a little... Mm -mm. I, I recommend don't do that. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, and I and I feel you on that for sure. Um, most of you were gonna say something. Oh yeah. Um, so I wanted to also touch up on that because um, you started your streaming journey and really started to build it in Japan. Um, and you're trying to get used to so many different things, like you said, trying to adjust and all this stuff. Um, how much have you relied on streaming though to help you uh, on an emotional level? Because um, you know, I, we're, we're miles away from each other, um, but every time you hop on stream, it's always homies. You get a lot of love from the local people here, especially, and you get a lot of love from, you know, people who are just your regulars, your mutuals. Um, how, uh, how, how, how has that provided you emotional support knowing that, um, you know, whatever is going on in Japan and their customs are different, um, knowing that you can just jump on stream and just, you know, hang out with, uh, the gang. How, how has that been for you? It's been great. I, I have to say that I am, um, excuse me, I'm very appreciative and I'm so grateful I'm in Japan because 
I don't think it would have worked if I was somewhere else, if I was in the like EU, if I was in the States, because time difference. I'm only one hour behind Guam, and that makes a lot of things work. That makes everything work. That makes, you know, you guys work, um, majority of those who are back home work from 9 to 5 or morning, afternoon shift, and they're free at night. And it works out, too, because if any of my friends or anyone who I support are streaming that time, I can be there. And if I'm streaming, if they're free, they can come to me. You know, it's such a it's really such a support uh, system and a, like a synergy, synergize, like give and take kind of aspect to it that I, I can't be more appreciative of that. Um, streaming as also as much as, yeah, I'm in the beautiful country of the rising sun and all that, but I'm in the countryside, so I don't have anywhere near close to me that can be like popping in terms of like going out karaoke like no i'm in the countryside where the three things that's popping here are oranges farm <laughs> farming and pinko i'm not even joking like i have to find something to entertain myself I, I and i'm so grateful that i have you know my support system and everyone where sometimes being out here it's 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 really different because not only am i by myself in Japan, in the countryside, it's also a little bit more of a culture shock because back at home in Guam, everyone is a little bit homey and love and hospitality. And that's straight up Guam vibes. That's really Guam vibes. Here it's, you know, everyone's kind and to their own, but it's it's not the same. And that's all I can say. So having um, having to be, come, you know, come home, relax, jump on a game with my boys, jump on stream to see any of you boys streaming or any of the homies streaming, just support them, just show some love. It, it also like, it, it basically, you know, it, is a big thing for like my mental health. Trust me, it, it is, it is because, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on that's happening in the world right now. And, you know, I hope everyone's safe for that matter. Um, it like COVID is not, it's not, I don't, I hate COVID. Yeah. I hate Corona so much because every year I, I try to come back home once or twice just to reset. And if you guys understand about the whole Japan, like consistency in terms of like work, 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 it's, it's, it's a thing. It's seriously the workaholics. They just nonstop work. And it's sometimes very, it's kind of scary. It's a little, it's, it can be a little bit scary at that point. So that's why I like to come home. Like to unwind, enjoy my enjoy the beaches, enjoy the my friends, my family, the love. Go out, have fun, and just do it all over again for as long as I'm there. But I had two trips planned, it didn't work out. Um, so I got to make the best of it. I got to make the most of it. Um, you know, I with my line of work, I cannot risk going back home, catching something, coming back to Japan, and risking it to what I do. And I work with children. I will not. I will mm -mm, no. Nah, I will never do that. I will nope. I had to. I. I may be selfish and I wanted to go, but no, I cannot do that to my kids and never will I ever do that. So I just got to, you know, bite my tongue and just like grip my teeth and understand that this is so much bigger than me. But that's why for my mental health and for my sanity, video games and for what we can do online on the Internet, especially communicating like what we're doing now. Um, you know, we got Zoom, we got Discord, we got FaceTime, we got games that we can play with each other. And it's. Yeah, we live in that time where we have we have options and ways to actually uh, be there for each other, and I I'm so grateful and happy for that. Yeah. Cool. Um, one thing I'm I just wanted to ask because you you actually touched a little bit briefly on it, like how has uh um uh, you and you mentioned like uh that COVID has uh, affected you know like your plans, especially in visiting Guam, right? But are is there anything else that it's affected you, like you know um like living in japan like how is how is the situation there um how have you like adapt how have you like adapted to that sort of situation and you know uh what's uh how are, how are you feeling in terms of that just because you know it's such a it's such a huge change that you have to like uh and uh, it's a huge also restriction for a lot of us right like how how are you handling that um I'm just, I'm going to be 100% honest. My town has hardly been affected by it. So ever since COVID started becoming a thing, which was what, late February or March, um, uh, let's put it this way, guys. When that happened, until now, we only had four cases. We only had four cases. Only four cases in my town alone, okay? So this is not Tokyo. This is not Osaka or anything like that. Four cases. 
no one died all recovered so that's good because yeah. everyone here follows the rules everyone understands social distancing everyone wears a mask because it's part of you know part of their culture i don't want your family member to get sick i don't want to get sick see it's, it's easy to understand right it's easy i don't want you to die you don't want me to die <laughs> that's it right but yeah. you true, know to true. each his own um so the only thing is like COVID just kind of blocked my way of coming back home and resetting and sometimes i really need that sometimes i wish i was just at home for a week or like two weeks i usually take for going, coming back home and you know some people may think it's, it's such a waste man you're coming it we're so, we're so close like guam and japan are so close like why would you waste a trip on coming back home and i'm just because my friends and my family and my home's there like how how difficult is that you know how difficult is that to understand like it helps me relax it helps me reset so with the whole COVID thing, um, Japan has been has done a phenomenal job where my teachers were telling me that if they wanted to leave our town and when they get to like um, kind of like the section where they're entering to a new city or a new place, they need permission from their superior officer to go into the next town. Oh. So it's pretty crazy. So like when we had our summer break, you needed permission. So my teacher needed a permission from our principal to be allowed to go into the next city over, to go into the next town over. And that just comes to show you that Japan's got their stuff down. And I can't, well, you got to understand too, if, I'm pretty sure all, you know, everyone or whoever's at least experienced Japan life in terms of big cities, Osaka, Tokyo, Hiroshima, at least for those, especially Tokyo, you've never seen Tokyo kind of chill. So you can, under, you can kind of understand that it needs to be, it needs to be working. There's people, there's rush hour, there's the trains, it's full. So it's a little bit scary to understand that people still got to work, but companies can't afford to kind of like lock down because Aww. things still need to be happening. You know what I mean? So um, it kind of really sucks because it's a really severe situation, especially with this pandemic. And as much as I, I don't want to get sick, I don't want to bring that home to my family and all that stuff. But I mean, you guys been to Japan, you see how Tokyo is. So they, you can understand why cases are rising and why it's like that or why um this is happening and uh what they're doing to at least kind of minimize at least, at least damage control if i can say so stuff like that I don't, i'm not too aware because i am far i am literally far from um tokyo i think i'm like 12 10 to 12 hours away by bus mm -hmm. so i don't really know what's happening in that neck of the woods or anything like that but yeah that's that's what's going on um, I one what I know that you uh said something about um like, well, Street Fighter is your game, right? And uh, you know, we are on the Laddie Esports podcast, so you know, for us, Laddie Esports is about the development of esports on on our island locally. And uh, even though I know that you're not necessarily here at this time, you know, I I just wanted to uh get your thoughts. Like, what are your thoughts on competitive gaming and where like would you like to see the island like in the future uh in in regards to like esports yeah like uh, esports yeah. on the island like what what do you think uh how would you see the future with with us like being involved in that i i i really think guam always has the potential to always to compete with you know other countries to compete at that level I mean, a really good, ex uh, a really good example that if I if I can share is um, jujitsu, right? We're able, we're a small island, but we're able to take, you know, gold medals from not from like my brother who's a very decorated um, jujitsu specialist and uh, yeah, who's been nonstop competing and training for that. But you have other gyms in 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 Guam who can compete at that level and win. So that's not just to say for only jujitsu, but that's for that's to say in all sports aspects. So esports, definitely a good thing. I I know we can. I think it's just the one thing that I I, I guess I can I really apply is in in at least in America, for example, it's just they have better internet, they have you know higher and maybe consistent tournaments or um uh, at least for comp competition for that. And in Guam, we're just so limited. We're, we're just so limited in what we can do. We're, we're always facing the same people. We can't face other people because 
our ping is that high and no one wants to play with us. So it's just, damn, we don't have the right resources to show what Guam can do. And to be honest, um, because if that's the case, I come from a small island, but I, you know, I did pretty well for my first, my, my first major tournament in Japan EVO. I did exceptionally well for, to, for, you know, EVO Vegas. And I, I, I still want to continue to know that I need to put in more work. But if I can do that, anyone else can in, in, from the island of Guam. And that just comes to show, like, you put in the work, like everything else in life, you put in the work, everything's going to come into uh, fruition of, like, what's going to happen and what's going to work. So, you know, so for all those people who think, don't, don't shortchange yourself, don't limit yourself to think that, oh, we're from Guam, we're nothing. Like, no, man, put in the work, how, show everyone and how bad you want it and it's, it's there for, it's it's there for the taking nice uh right right before we get into the next question i know most probably has a question we're gonna actually go to a very quick shout out on commercial we're gonna be promoting the interscholastic esports series for league of legends register by october 24th the league begins on october 31st represent your school in this eight week series it's $150 per team. It's, uh, however, it's six players per team, so it's not as expensive as you think it'd be. And also, did I mention, it comes with free jerseys for each player. Pretty insane. Uh, it's open to all Guam educational institutions. So you could be at GDOE or even some private schools, Triton Esports, please uh, definitely check them out. So that that's it for that uh, commercial. Um, most any any uh any uh, follow up questions uh, for AB Jits? Just to build off of the esports thing, um, you know, I I'm currently working on a, a story about the history of it, and a lot of it too, um, at least the the ground roots of it, especially behind Ken Barry PQ, a lot of it was, um, the foundation was built off the FGC and what you guys were able to do, build local turn or put local tournaments together and then have the scene come. Um, you know, can you talk? Uh, you were you were there to experience a lot of that from the beginning, like the ground roots of it from the FGC. Um, can you just share um, how that, how important you felt that aspect of the uh, foundation was, where you know you guys are throwing tournaments in the, in people's garages, in people's houses, and sometimes you're throwing it in, in you know, eventually move to other internet cafes and stuff. But um, how has that whole experience been for you to see where it is, where it was, and then how it's starting to grow now? Um, yeah, um, discovering Guam fighting game community was heaven to me because I found something that I was, like I said, passionate and I'm so obsessed about with other people who want to do the same thing with me, who want to kick each other's butt to show that they're the better player. So playing at, back then at G3 with these, I think it was fight night Wednesdays. I think it was every Wednesday. So I was looking forward to more of my Wednesday nights than my Friday nights because I just wanted to go out there and play. I wanted to, I get to go to G3, which closes at what, one or two in the morning. And I get to just play games with the homies here. Yeah, here, take my $3. I, I get to be here for the rest of the night. All right. Yeah, yeah, cool. And that was the best thing about it. And then we had, we have hardworking um, uh, TOs, hardworking uh, uh, homies who were in the back scenes of the GUFGC. So, like, shout outs to GGPQ, shout outs to Shado, shout outs to Ken, shout outs to all these people who actually gave up their houses to to have a sesh. Like, uh, at that time, Guam Fighting com uh, Game Community was just based off Street Fighter. Sooner or later, Marvel came in, and then sooner, uh, every other game kind of like trickled in. And now it's different because now Street Fighter is hardly even recognizable anymore. And it's because the GU FGC scene, the OGs, kind of, you know, they're growing up. We can't do this thing forever. But you have, you know, hardworking people like Shado and Ken and like Ark himself who are still here doing this for the love of the game. And I'm so happy I got to experience it, even though it is a niche uh, for a certain amount of people who could come through uh, for at least Street Fighter back then. But I had some of the, my best times and my best memories, you know, thank for, the, for these people who put up these you know local tournaments who put up something on the line for at least to be the best street fighter in guam uh uh what was one uh select start oh, i remember yeah. select start. a big shout out to shadow for that um i remember for street, uh, street fighter 5's biggest tournament for the year at rackham 
So, um, what you want. yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, Kyle Martinez, hold that boy. <laughs> so, it was, it was, it was good. It was great. I would never, and that's why I can't necessarily let Street Fighter go. And as much as I can do anything for those people who want to become streamers, at least anything related to esports for Laddy Esports, or those who want to get into fighting games, or it's not just not just Street Fighter, but fighting games in general, man, I welcome. Just understand, put in the work, and hopefully you enjoy yourself and get to you know get to try something new. Because back then, the fact that you have like I said, Shado and Ken still working. And then you have like the new generation for those who are working so hard to still make Guam fighting game community still alive. You know, so shout outs to Adrian for putting in the work, man. Shout outs for those. It's like, it's no longer Street Fighter and it's Smash and it's League and it's, you know, Valorant. But those individuals themselves are making FGU, FGC still alive. And hey, man. Uh, we love to see the dream work. We lo- we still love to see the dream alive. And because of you guys, man, big shout outs to you. But never forget the OG Street Fighter, baby. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Yeah, that's, that's great. I yeah, remember my I first did. tournament too with you, Ark. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know how to play the game, and I was just like, oh, that, <laughs> damn, we're gonna get mopped. Hey, like... a dub's a dub. A dub's yeah. a dub. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, this guy's not even looking at me. He's just like looking away. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was so good because we we played the tournament, and I was like, "Oh, am I, Ark? I'm facing you?" Like, yeah. Like, oh, I don't even know how to play this game. I'm like, all right. I'm sorry. And he's like, "It's cool, bro. It's cool, bro." I'm sorry. He's like, "No mercy," and I'm like, "Okay." I was like, I respect. "Hey, I'm gonna get the scrape quick. Don't worry, I got you. I got you." <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. I respect but that's it. it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I, I know you mentioned like there's like people picking up a niche. Um, one thing uh for streaming is like you know everybody has their own niche, right? What do you think is yours? Like what do you think is your niche that separates you from like the other streamers out there? Oh, um, uh, man, I that's a I guess that's a little bit difficult because I I feel like maybe I I sh- sh- can or I shouldn't be able to answer that, but more. I would actually ask maybe the people who are part of my community, mm-hmm. but if you were to ask me, is um, I I man, I, that's a that's a really good question, but that's a really hard one too, uh, because I don't want to, uh, I guess say something maybe that could be misleading or wrong. So if you guys can probably correct me if anything, but uh, I guess what separates me from other streamers is, um, I I love to support anyone who's part of my community. I, that's, I can't, I have to, I, I, like I, like I said, I can't, I would, I would be nothing. I would be nowhere without the love and support from my community. So if any chance I get, uh, you come through, you're one of the homies, you're part of the JIT squad, you, you're you regular there, trust me, I'll shout you out. Trust me, I'll always shout you out. It's not, no mistake on that. And I think I do what I can to at least now I'm beginning to realize, which I started this year, where I want to make sure that because you guys, a lot of the people who come and watch me are giving me their time, I, I also want to do something that I can give back. So recently this year, I started kind of like a JIT Squad in-house tourney for Street Fighter and for Smash. And it's just for something where I can commentate and I can have you guys, you know what, man? It's not about me. It's about you guys too. Come here and whoop some butt. Come here and show what's up, you know? Like, yeah. Hey, it's all for fun and games. Lag's gonna be an issue, but if you're cool with it, if you're here for the memes and you're here for the, you know, laughs, come through. And it's been, it's been slightly successful. It's been really good. And I just try to make sure that, uh, it's not all about me, 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 but rather than what it's more about, you know, us, 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 as much as I can. So I just, I think that would be one thing. And hopefully, uh, I guess another one would. Be a, <laughs> a lot of people say I'm entertaining, so I'll just take that with a grain of salt and just be like, yeah, I'll just nod my head, sure. I'll take that, though, because uh, I have a lot of people just being like, oh, man, you're so funny when we do this. Like, no, then don't do that. Just, yeah, so. But, hey, hey, hey you, you, you too, hey, man, you already know, so let's not get into that. But that's pretty much all I can say about, I guess, what kind of makes me sep- uh, different from the other streamers. Uh, yeah, that's it. 
Okay. You know, obviously, we're asking you to explain this because, you know, we want to see what you're from your perspective. Where do you feel you are? Um, but, you know, at, at least for the people in the community, I can I can vouch for um, you've kind of built a, a solid community around um, yourself. And it's not just your friends. I think what's most um, I, I think what's the greatest thing to see is that you have people from different walks of life, um, Australia, Europe people from Guam, people from Japan, come together um, and kind of enjoy you at, on the same playing field. Um, and I think your reactions to things are great. Uh, you are very entertaining, of course. Your reactions to things, um, I think what, what get people uh, coming back because it's authentic, it's genuine, it's authentic, and it shows that you know you actually care um, about what's going on. You're not putting on a show. You're not faking it in front of anybody. You're always 100% real. Um, and I think that people just gravitate towards that because it's like they know what they're getting authentic AB jits every single time they tune into the show. And I think a lot of people um, come back for that, you know, because it's like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what goes on a lot of, in a lot of people's lives, but I'm sure like, you know, being able to tune into someone as real as you are, whether you keep it, you know, sometimes you have your, your things you don't agree on, some things you have your things that you do agree on, um, regardless of whatever it is that's going on in your stream, you're always 100% authentic. And I think that's what people are just like, you know what? This guy is, is real with me. I'm going to keep it real with him. And, you know, that's how your community is really – that's how it's been um, from the minute we started. We've always kind of just, you know – I mean, Ark and I have been lucky to be there from the from the jump. And we we can say that we've seen a lot of people come by, and the people that do come by are always there for the same reasons. Is that, hey, uh, AB Jits is as real as it gets, and I want to be their supporter. So from the outsider's perspective, I know, you know, like you – like it's it's it, that's how you – that's how you probably don't see it that way as often because you're the one entertaining us. But I'm sure I can speak on behalf of Ark to say that that's that's like a huge reason why a lot of people there is because, um, you know, you're you're as real as it gets, and we love that. Right, and it's it's all about the humility, right, as well, right, being being humble, uh, but also just like Mikasa Sukasa. You know, we this is the house. You 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 if you respect the house, you you part, right? You're a homie, legit, right? So. Uh, definitely a lot of good vibes um, from your stream, and I, I can definitely vouch for that. Um, I think uh, I actually skipped like one uh, important question because uh, even I even I don't necessarily know. But for for the people out there who wants to know, like when when did you start streaming actually, and like how how did you how did it all start? Like when when did you decide like uh, to start, and like what was the game that you started with streaming? Oh, uh, yeah. So if anything, like I said earlier, um, Arc Pulse, man, you inspired me. You motivated me to try it out. I, I, I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see where it, uh, how, I, how it goes. And that's the beginning of my journey. And, you know, like when that, ha when, when, that, when that was going on, I have you homies who were li literally there for the first day who make time for my streams just to help me get affiliate. You know what I mean? So we just like, okay. Stream for this day, stream for this amount of hours, and you got this amount of average viewers, right? And then word of mouth, because uh, I love the, the support from each and every one of you guys. So I started, I think, around uh, maybe 2018 March. I think 2018 March. So that's when I started to stream. Uh, I had all the questions uh, for ARC to help me with it. Um, I didn't have uh the fancy set of the fancy pc or anything like that i did with what i had i had a basic ps4 i connect my twitch account um to um yeah a basic ps4 twitch, twitch account to my ps4 i hit start broadcast and it just went from there uh sooner or later i upgraded to a PS4 camera, so now that everyone could see me and all that. And that's what it was. I, I didn't really care about what I couldn't do at the moment. I can't be like, oh, I need I need the the ring light. I need this setup. I need a fancy PC because I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I'm not here in Japan for a long time. And I was thinking in the long run, I'm not gonna carry that all the way back home. Like I need something what I can do with right now and I enjoy streaming and I needed something that can work with me. So 2018, I got my, Asus gaming laptop, which I was a little bit hesitant to convert from PS4 because it was so easy and so comfortable. And then going into it, I was like, ah, oh, what is OBS? I don't know <laughs> that. Ark, help me. <laughs> and sooner or later, got the hang of it. I had a lot of homies who were there. I can be, the one thing I can do, uh, I can say from the transition is 
I can be creative. And I think that's the best thing about Twitch for your platform, your community, for yourself, is you can be creative. Be creative with alerts. Be creative with your gifts for whatever comes through. Be creative for a specific mod that comes in. Be creative with your emotes, everything. It's a platform that allows you to be creative. And as much as it took some time to get used to, I love it. I love it. So from 2018 to now, I'm still streaming a little bit more consistent this time. Like 2020 is actually, I found a really good schedule that works for me and hopefully works for everyone else. So I've been streaming for quite some time. Uh, I had, a, I think in my first, in my first year, I was a little bit on and off because I got injured, I traveled and I wasn't really feeling it for the streaming. So I got the highs and lows of streaming and for all those who are going to get into streaming, you're going to have that. It's not all about, you know, donation, gift subs, 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 man. Sometimes you got to be prepared for some of those buttholes, those a-holes who are going to come through and be like, you suck. I'm like, damn, why are you mad? But that's why when I'm streaming, I don't got to worry about that because I got my mods. <laughs> oh, you acting? Go ahead. Go ahead, homie. Do your thing. Oh, you're banned. Nice try, though. Take care. So that's just how I feel about that. And I enjoy streaming. And that's how long I've been streaming in from the, from the transfer or the switch from the PS4 where into my laptop has been a big change. But the one thing that as much as Ark, you inspired me to, to start streaming was I wanted to build something. I wanted to build something for myself. I wanted to build a, you know, a community, a place where people can come through and just show some love and just chill with each other. So I wanted to build myself for streaming. I wanted to build a community and I just wanted to, you know, um, I guess just have something for anyone who wants to tune in, whoever, whoever wants to be a part of it, you're more than welcome. And for any of those who hopefully like what they enjoy and the entertainment, man, thank you. And I appreciate it. Cool. Um, we're going to be, uh, we're actually reaching a little bit, uh, close to the end time. So we're going to be throwing out our final questions. Most, uh, let's get started with you. Uh, what are your final questions for AB? And then I'll probably be closing it out. Okay. I just, because we didn't touch up on it too much and, uh, AB just mentioned it a little bit, um, mental health, it is suicide prevention month in September. Um, we do want to address this, uh, you know, it, it, it suicide is, is a big problem. Um, not just on Guam, it's all over the world. And a lot of people, you know, um, get depressed and get into this state of mind and for a lot of things. Um, and, you know, I know for for streamers that are just starting out, or even maybe people that have been doing it for a little bit, maybe if you can just share um, your experience and how you dealt with, you know, the lows of streaming, where when you just started, you know, you had two viewers. You had maybe no followers for like a straight week. Um, no one was talking in chat, dead chat. And I'm sure for a lot of people, new streamers, that can weigh heavy on them. Like, man, people just don't like me. I probably should just give up. And it gets really depressing to feel like, hey, I don't know if I even want to do this anymore. Um, how was your experience with that? How did you deal with that? Um, and how? what advice can you give people who are also in that state? Um, I guess, yeah, like what I mentioned earlier, uh, that's a very good question, most, is like you have to understand that you're never gonna have everything is gonna be high, high, high in terms of all the donation and the love coming through. Sometimes you know your friends and the people who actually tune in are gonna be busy with their lives, so you gotta make with what you can. You you just gotta un understand that people have lives too. But the fact that and the biggest thing that puts me uh, like makes me you know down to earth and makes me understand is that I have people who are taking their time to come watch me. And that should really make everyone understand that that's special. So with, with, with going with that, it's just um, take, it, take it for what it's worth and use it as a time to just kind of like practice on your, you know, your speaking skills. If no one's in chat, just, just kind of practice of how you would talk of playing the game and talking to chat, playing the game. Um, so I know a lot of people who who kind of go to find other streamers and they follow certain people, it's like, I, I feel there's only two things they're looking for. People who are entertaining and people who are good at the game. So if you're entertaining, people will stay, watch you, laugh, joke with you. If you're really good at the game, people will watch you. If you're neither, then it's going to be a little bit hard. So you're, it's, I did have that. And there was that one point in time where I took some time off because I wasn't going anywhere. 
and um, try not to focus on the numbers, try not to focus on the gift subs, try not to focus on like who's watching you, uh, who's coming through, who's donated, who's this and that, like, oh, how come you're not sub to me anymore? Like, don't worry about that, man. They're, they're still coming through, they're showing love. So appreciate. The biggest thing I can say is appreciate for what you have because maybe one day you're on your low, the next day that you stream, the whole, the whole gang comes through. The whole gang comes through and shows some love. Maybe one random you know, person is going to be like, hey, man, you're a cool guy. Ten subs. Enjoy your day, man. You have a good day. Here's a follow. I have experienced that. Like, I don't even know this guy. Like, hey, man, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Hey, man, you're a cool guy. Here's a follow. Five subs. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, man. Later. Yeah. And that's, so, that's just such a simple gesture, but it, it makes you feel appreciative. And I think you should do your best to make sure that you don't forget that don't take everything for granted, but also appreciate for everything that you get, in, at least in, in, in the way from Twitch. So that's all I can say about that matter. Cool, cool. And uh, what are like, uh, you, you know, streaming, it, it really takes a lot of, uh, I'd say, research, right? And also like looking into things. So, so um, well, you, you did say like uh, some people who uh, are new streamers, like, you know, these are some things that you'd like to do. Um, any other tips that you want to give to new streamers? And also just, uh, can you also touch base on like, what are some things that you've learned from streaming? Like, you know, that's something, some skills probably you picked up. Um, so one of the biggest, one of the big things that I actually like to do is I like to watch bigger streamers and how they handle, um, you know, uh, certain things while streaming, how, how they handle if chat's going wild, how they go through, you know, a series of just people showing love. And I just like, damn, okay. Because at one point in time, our, my, my first year of streaming, I was a little bit, if I'm losing a Street Fighter, I'm not in a good mood. I'm not in a good mood. And it's just the salt builds. And I really appreciate that I had a lot of my support system, like, hey, man, who after stream, like, hey, um, maybe you want to tone down the salt because it's kind of makes it a little uncomfortable to be around. You like no one wants to be in a stream where the person's pissed off, doesn't look at chat, doesn't entertain, and who's just like, oh, mad at the world because they're losing. And I had to find that with myself to just chill, relax, and understand that people are coming here. So if I lose, I take like a minute to like, ah, rage, and then play casuals, play a different game. And, you know, I, I find these different tactics or these techniques to like, I'm salty. What am I salty at? Street Fighter. What I need to do? Play a different game, play casuals, go to training, look at chat, engage with chat. And I have all these things that I can do in terms of if things are not going my way, right? Those are some things that I can do. Um, another thing too, as I, if I can say like be creative, uh, whatever happens in my chat a lot, I find, you know, sound bites. I find gifts or, uh, or emotes that fit that moment. So it's not like, I'm putting, making like a random emote and just stuffing it in. It's like, okay, what's a really, what's a good situation that happens a lot in my streams? And I think if you stream long enough and you find what usually happens in your streams, you want to, you take that moment and find maybe a really good expression of an emote and represent that moment. So um, I, I'm very, I'm very blessed and appreciative that uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that I, my emotes are used for. And I, I just, I'm thankful for that. So I'm also, I had a lot of help with my stream deck and using sounds that I help, had help from Arc. I get a lot of, um, you know, second, um, what's that, personal opinions and actually like, hey, what do you think most? What do you think, fam? And they've helped me a lot. They've helped me out a lot with, regarding with that. So it's funny, be creative, have a good time. And that's what I really love about it. Nice, nice. Uh, any any final uh, questions, most before we close out? Uh, I guess I just wanted to just give your, or uh, if AB can just share, give a one final note about just your two years. Um, reflect on it. Just, I mean, you don't have to get too elaborate on it, but just you know, reflecting on your past couple of years of streaming. Um, just you know, um, I guess your biggest takeaway from you is that what are you? I mean, you're still growing. We're, we're you're still growing we're still growing as a community and we're you know we're always going to uh, support that but at least for your first two years what is your biggest takeaway and what are you most proud of that you've been able to accomplish while streaming 
Uh, my biggest accomplishment is my community. But that is my biggest accom accomplishment. Uh, maybe another one would be able to stream and use my stream is to kind of like a journey to get to a certain rank in Street Fighter, which I accomplished, which I told myself I would, and I did it. That's another one. So I'm happy to know that I have people, once I got that rank, people were just there to support me and be like, bro, you did it. You did it. I said, man, that feels good. But um, highs and lows throughout my two years of streaming, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Of uh, How you deal with it and how you, um, uh, what you can do to make of it, it's totally up to you. And it can either break you and make you quit, or it can make you and make you grow. So those are some things that I think I would try to like get out there for those who are becoming new streamers. And as of right now, as much as this is like my first, yeah, my two years into streaming, to be honest, this is the best year I've had for streaming because of the, the amount of love and support. And all I can say to the people who I've met along the way, the people who has been there with me from year one or even now, or even those really strong connections like, oh, yeah, um, I just met this homie. Yeah, yeah, he's this. And he's consistent. He's um, he just sh make sure he tries to make it to the streams. And so, like, the biggest um, I can say for that position would be, you know, shout outs to the homie Shinjoni. Because, brother, man, we, we just met you a couple of months ago, bro. But you, I'm going to say it right now, homie. We all think straight up from the Guam boys, you a real one, bro. I'm just going to say that right now, dog. You a real one. And so big love to Shinjoni for because if I can go two years, for example, two years going into that and meet someone as great as like my mods and like, you know, shout out to GRD, Storm, and especially like Shinjoni too, man, it's, it's all worth it. It's all worth it to find these individuals who are like, who are down for you or down for any kind of support, word of mouth, raid, uh, anything they do or they want to throw at you, their time. And it's just, it, it's a, it's a really good feeling. So the biggest, uh, the biggest compliment that I can ever get every time I stream, it's just like, man, AB, your community is dope. I'm like, I'm going to brag them on that. It is. My community is dope because they are. They are all freaking dope. Troublemakers, but they're all freaking dope. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And I think uh, we are going to be uh, definitely closing out this session with a real, a typical streamer question um that i'm pretty sure everybody expects is would you like to stream as a career and why or why not uh <laughs> i know we talked about this a few times i mean if i were to do it seven or what five six days out of the week stay at home and just stream um i mean maybe for a lot of people out there they would do it you know, sponsored, get paid, donations, subs, and all the support, which is cool, which is great. But I really think I probably wouldn't do it because I enjoy it for what it is, and it's a hobby. It's it's if, if you make it a chore for me, if you make it a job for me, I don't think I'll be as authentic. I don't think I'll be as real, to be honest. To I as as honest I can be, I I don't think I would because I come here on my own time. I come here because I want to chill with all, you know, the homies, the supporters, the real ones in my chat. Sometimes I boot up stream and like, I don't really want to play a game. Can I just chill with you guys if that's cool? And that's how I sometimes feel. But if I got to be like, oh, man, I, I got to stream. Yeah, I got to do the same thing again. I mean, everyone to, to each his own. If you think you can do it, if you want to be a partner and make it a career, that's that's more more power to you but i guess for me i don't think i can i don't think i would well de sometimes depends kind of sponsor and all that stuff but most likely as of right now i don't think so i don't think i'd make it as a career cool thank you thank you so much um i think that that kind of helps us wrap up the podcast we did ask like a lot of questions we uh definitely thank you so much for your time av uh it, it was a pleasure having you on the podcast also thank you so much to uh most definite for being a co-host um hey, as well let's go shout out. so um happy to be here. Happy to be here. you could probably see it on the screen um but uh, for those of you who are going to be listening to the audio version, can you guys just hand out your uh, your your socials, your Twitch handles? Uh, where where can people find you if they're looking for you? Uh, I oh so for me, uh, I only use two kinds of social media. 
and that's Twitter and Twitch, or and I guess three, including Discord. So if you want to um, find the Discord, uh, check out the page uh, for my Twitch page at twitch.tv slash backslash abjits. I think that's how it works, right? I could yeah. be wrong. Am I? Is that right? Yeah. And then uh, Twitter is at, at abjits. So those are the only three social media, I, I guess, platforms that I use. I don't use Facebook. And please do not find me on Instagram. No, no, no. I don't <laughs> like those. But yeah, those are the only three you can find me on. Cool. Yeah. Most find me at also twitch.com backslash abjits. Uh, I'm always in the <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in the streams. I'm missing. Yeah, you can find me at um uh also twitch uh backslash most definite. Um I am not Moss Define. Um for anyone curious, it is not Moss Define. It is most definite, but I appreciate the love and support regardless. But uh, yeah, um, and but you can also catch me at backslash abjits. I'm always there. I'm always there. That's true. <laughs> hey, but please, can I get this out too? It's not abjits. It's not abbits. It's not abrits. Please. Hey, I know all of you. Stop that. It's abjits. It's either or, whatever. Okay, for especially for the go uh, those who have known me since the GU FGC OG days. I don't know how you're still calling me Ab Jits, for the love of God. <laughs> Baby Jits, please. First two letters, Jits, that's it. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No worries. No worries. It's definitely good to get that clarification out. And you can also find me uh, at twitter.com slash artpulse, also twitch.tv slash artpulse. Um, but primarily uh, a, a primary co-host for uh, Ken, who unfortunately he couldn't be here today. But shout outs also to Ken. Um, you can find uh, Ken Laddie Esports, no. uh, which is the one who uh, produced this podcast. So uh, thank you uh, to everybody who is listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, We'll be here uh, again next week with a new guest and we'll be signing off right now. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.